Castaway 2000 is the story of an experiment to create a new society for a new millennium. A cross-section of the British population cast adrift on a remote island to discover how they'll build and shape a community away from everyday life. The island is Tarrancay in the Outer Hebrides. Measuring three miles long and two miles wide, it combines golden beaches with rugged Atlantic coastline. Its only inhabitants are a herd of wild deer and 700 sheep, which brave the harsh conditions. The island's bleak climate has turned once inhabited buildings into ruins and left the island deserted until January the 1st, 2000. Over 4,000 people answered our call for volunteers to take up this unique challenge, but only 30 will be given the opportunity to go. Young and old, individuals and families all felt they had something to offer and had their own reasons for wanting to do it. 30 people dumped together on January the 1st, 2000, with your worst ever hangover from the biggest New Year's party of your life. Your head's going to be spinning, your feet are going to be freezing, your roof's going to be leaking, and there's no Asda's to go and get your shopping at. How primitive are we going? Playing action man for a year. <laughs> and you've given us two winters instead of two summers. She's Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> I think if I get drunk at Christmas and I can sober up about March, just as the good weather's coming in. <laughs> what do I miss the most? That's, that's a good question. Um, Cigarettes. Moisturiser, a hairdryer, my vanity case, my waxing stuff. Women. Um. Um. Prawn curry, really unless they have like a, the, they might have an Indian like in the little village, might they? <laughs> Although it's nice having the family home and the trinkets around you. Um, it would be interesting to know what it's like without them. My mates think I'm stupid. They think I'm absolutely crazy for wanting to go off and spend a whole year on some island. They all say, tropical island, yes. Scottish island, no way. <laughs> I want some time and some space to find out who Tina is. I've been looking after other people, doing what other people want all of my life. A sort of chance to escape the humdrum existence. I'll carry on with this right now, I don't think. <laughs> Would you like me to sort off now? To win a place on the island, volunteers have had to prove themselves to a team of experts who use their personal experiences and professional expertise in psychology, alternative technology and survival training to decide which of the volunteers will be up to the challenge. I've got them behind there because I've got a lot of leverage on. Now, with this finger lock, that finger comes round, round the neck, a pull, and the head is separated. He's dead. You're going to knock a lot of rough houses off him, and I don't think um, they quite know what they're letting themselves in for. They're going to learn a lot about each other, and certainly a lot about themselves. And all the characters I've seen, like I say, they've all got something going for them. And it's the mental ability, you know, not the physical side. Although they're going to work hard, you know, we're all capable of doing that, and we can judge how strong we are. But it's the mental strength. It's very hard to judge, and that's what I've been looking at, you know. One of the few people who's experienced life as a castaway is writer and traveller Lucy Irvin, although she was on a tropical rather than a Hebridean island. What I'm trying to find out is how many people really want to cut off... But while she survived virtually on her own, these castaways will have to work as a community to succeed. Doesn't it feel like a hell of a responsibility? I and mean, it would scare me, I mean, to do something like that. I'd find it fascinating. But it is a huge responsibility. There's no government out there telling you what's good for you. It's like you're going to form your own society completely. I think that you have to bear in mind that you're going to get totally annoyed, totally angry, very depressed and um, want the sunshine, want a gin and tonic in the bar. Confronting the volunteers with the grim reality of life on the island was an important part of the selection process. We're putting a group together that want to work as a community and we have to recognise how they make their decisions, whether leaders emerge, um, people that sit back and don't do anything or don't say anything or, or don't make a contribution to it. And that's a difficult thing for them to do with only 30 going to an island for a year and the pressure from other people on members of the community to make a contribution. We'll also learn something about stress, undoubtedly, because it's a very stressful situation that they're going to be in. Based on written applications and interviews, 32 men, women and children were invited to a week of practical exercises to find the first half of the castaway community. Could they cope with managing their own sewage? Oh, look at the wolf! 
Would they get to grips with their own livestock and could they produce their own food? Our team of experts were watching their every move to choose the 15 individuals who will be offered this unique experience. I had a pretty conventional life when a lot of my contemporaries were dropping out and doing their own thing in the 60s. I did the very conventional thing and got married, and raised children, and I always wished somehow that I'd perhaps I'd spend a bit more time for me before I did that. Well, I didn't, but now, now's my time. It's something I've always wanted to do from being a, a young fella. I've always been an adventurous, and one of them what I'd like to cram a lot into my life, you know, and people just sitting in a, an armchair. This is a weird time for me to apply for this. I am the happiest I've ever been in my life. And if somebody told me that at 43 I'd be training to be a shrink and managing a pop band and working for cute cartons as a tour guide and applying for Castaway, um, I wouldn't quite believe it, but that's what my life is about. It's day one. For a week, the Castaway volunteers will stay in eco-cabins at the Centre for Alternative Technology in Wales, learning to live with wind power, limited resources, and a compost toilet system where a flush of running water is replaced by a sprinkle of sawdust. Is it sawdust with wee-wee? No, Above all, the chosen volunteers will have to learn to live with each other and agree their own rules. So, to start, we've left it up to them to decide on the sleeping arrangements. I'm expecting the worst out of castaways. I'm expecting the hole in the ground, the, the real bad, because if you expect the worst, then anything that's bonus on top of that is going to be better. I can't go loud because of this. It would be, you know, my life's dream and how perfect is it, you know. Um, I'd get the opportunity to prove to myself once and for all that I can do something as challenging. I'd get to be part of such an amazing um, project. I have the ability to give up my job. I don't own my flat. I can sell my car. You know, I've got no dependence. Um, it's something I can do now, but in five or ten years' time, if I've got all that and another opportunity like this arose, I might be in very different circumstances. So I wanted to grab it now whilst I got the chance. Do you promise me no, you no. won't have rampant sex all the time? Not we would at all. We would, no. You know we would. Are you snogging all night and I heard that all... But this has been, this has <laughs> been in that. Houston for two weeks, so I've not seen her, so... It so really, nice you want a room on your eyes? Do you want a room with me? Because you can tell me to piss off and then no, you can get it all together. Guys. My upbringing has certainly been one of, um, you know, trying through adversity, and if you can get through things, then you can tackle anything. And I think this is something you just got to put that head on and say, I can do this, I will do this, and I'll get the best out of it. Waffling. And we'll make it... You're waffling. No, I'm not. I'm waffling a bit, but we'll make, we'll make the most of it. Stop. <laughs> While the couples argue over sleeping arrangements, the single rooms appear to have been allocated by seniority. The worst thing in my life is I'm in my 70th year. The odds are that I won't see another 70, so I want to a lot of, as much as I possibly can, out at next bit. In order to reflect Britain today, the castaway community will consist of family units as well as individuals and couples. So while the singles and partners settle into their eco-cabin, the family groups arrive at their own accommodation. Oh, this one. Right, who's having what one, then? Oh, this is cosy. You want the top one, don't you? Yeah. I want this one, Dad! We'd do well. We'd be the ones that are smiling and laughing when the rain still yeah, pelting our faces. Yeah, we wouldn't quit. Yeah, I know we'd... that much because it'd be such a big step that we'd have to give it everything, mm, you know, yeah. stick it out completely. We won't be whinging after when we're saying all this, then we will be, we'll be whinging <laughs> more to... than anyone else. Time will tell. Won't <laughs> I know I should shut up now. <laughs> <laughs> Many of the volunteers offer specialist skills such as teaching, butchering, and yeah. medical care. Just some of the skills required if the community is to succeed. Come here, take your shoes off. Shoes <laughs> off. Hi, Good evening. Hi, hello. We've been talking about the idea of home education, which appealed to me. And I suddenly, Roger presented me with this, this advert in a magazine, and we thought, wow, that would be a good opportunity to, to home educate. I think 
like it. Um, to start with, I wouldn't like it much, but I might get used to it. Wow, bunk beds. Brilliant. Great. It is a bunk bed, exactly. But would you like to live on an island? No. <laughs> with the beds allocated and the ice broken, the volunteers spend the first two days getting to know more about each other and the challenges ahead of them. Meanwhile, our experts are weighing up the early evidence. I think they will be rather enterprising, some of them. Some people are quieter than others, and, and the families are in their own house, and, and they're grouped together, and they have a very nice atmosphere in there, and they're interestingly very well organised. I mean, they're almost organising their dinner parties, and who's cooking what night. When you come over to the cabin where the singles are, they don't seem to know where the next slice of bread's coming from, and they don't seem to care either. Just so yeah. you know the school, well, and I've got a clue what's going well, on. Nobody wants because to spend if we're going to relate to money... They seem to be more interested in shouting each other down, because there's an interesting thing happened the first night they were here, where they've, they've had a few drinks and they're all talking together. But a situation which led to slamming of doors, people trying to sleep, and, and relatively speaking, a bit of a barney. The drunken antics of the first night have proved too much for two of the cabin residents who feel they need a little more space. This life that most people live, you know, we're covered in so much veneer and so many crutches. If I don't like you, we're in London. I can lose you in five minutes. I'm not going to see you again for the rest of my life. I can bullshit you, whatever. But with, in a small community, you know, you see each other smile, you know, but you also hear each other fart. There's no way of avoiding it. And that's a crude way of putting it, but <laughs> I think it covers it well, you know. Uh, Sue and I have made uh, so many instant temporary homes over the years. And it's kind of important sometimes to make a space that feels a bit personal and somehow is more you, so to speak. I don't particularly enjoy company of drunk and people anymore because I think Kim stopped drinking. I like to to follow you know and sort of support him in that. I think it's a great move he did. Yeah I spent many years in pubs on the piss smoking dope all sorts of things when I was younger and uh, I don't enjoy it anymore. Um, I don't mind being in the company of a few people having a drink but when there's a gang of people and it gets noisy and it gets alcoholic based and uh, the main concern seems to be looking for the next glass of wine. There's nothing wrong with that, that's people enjoying themselves and that's great, you know, but I don't enjoy it and so uh, I don't want to be in there while that's happening. It's going to be too noisy to be in the cabin or whatever you call it, the room and uh, this is a convenient place to chill out and go to sleep. While drinking habits are a bone of contention in Wales, fresh water is also a concern in the Outer Hebrides. On Taransay, the search is on for a suitable supply for our community of around 30. <sighs> wow. Oh, that's good. <laughs> that's, um... Well, it does smell very anaerobic, though. It doesn't look very happy, does it? And it's no flow in it, is there? There's a nice sheep poo it's floating around in it. <laughs> I think what uh, you're probably right. You can come and you know come and take a couple of buckets of water out of here a day, and it will never run out. As soon as you start uh, getting a shower or something, and you're going to find that you pump that out pretty quickly. And in dry weather like we've just had, it, it, there's not going to be very much water there. In Wales, we impose rules on the residents of the eco cabin to make them consider how they would cope with a limited daily water supply. We've caught them bending the rules or as some might call it, cheating. The daily task, or twice daily task, we've got to actually fill from the mains tank, uh, the main tap, down into the tank, which by gravity supplies everything we've got down in the house. We were supposed to be doing it by buckets, but uh, we decided to make use of naturally available resources instead, and ease our task. So this is, it's working, is it? Apparently the one next to ours fills itself up. On the island, the hunt's still on for a fresh water supply that's larger and less contaminated than the old well. This looks much better. This is quite deep. Oh, that's quite a good shelf there. All good. So we can, um, we can run a pipe just straight over this and off that way. 
and we'll just siphon, siphon it out. Down. This is a good, this is promising. We can take the water from here, then a sand filter, and then it can be just gravity fed. It's very clear, which is good. Oh, yes. After two days of filling their water tank by hand, the volunteers have finally discovered the automatic stopcock we deliberately turned off. That's a well, while the guys it. were making all this sort of um, fiddle and faffing around, and I was just having a look trying to work out why the full cock wasn't working, and I found a stopcock down there, so I just turned it on. So ours is now filling up with the full cock. Fresh water is one thing that no one can do without, but a year without sex and romance was a prospect we asked all the applicants to consider. I suppose a year is quite a long time to go, isn't it? Um, without certain pursuits. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a problem, <laughs> really. I've done it before. <laughs> I shouldn't really admit that, but... <laughs> what would happen if, say, I slept with a married man or something on the island? Can you imagine? And they've got this confession box, and suddenly the whole of the British nation hates me. That's an extremely difficult, awkward question to answer. What did the couple say? Oh, well, we're OK, we're a couple. <laughs> No, I'm not looking for a romance in Ireland. Here am I. Well, I haven't had a shag in four months, so <laughs> um, I could live with it. Managing their own livestock will be a more immediate problem for the castaways, particularly as many of them have no experience of handling farm animals. He's sitting on stone. <laughs> It looks like a gorilla's finger. I thought I was going to say something else, didn't you? <laughs> but it does. And it... Look. This would be the quickest way for me in this lifetime to learn exactly, to find out exactly what I know and exactly what I don't know. And that's... I don't know how else I would do that. I'd love to work with the animals, yeah. I really, really would like to be with the sheep and the... Uh, I haven't met the pigs yet, but I would like to work with the animals, yeah. I wanted... Warbach, 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 Warbach. I changed Warbach. my mind. <laughs> Warbach. The island will test their emotional as well as their practical abilities. I don't know if I want to eat these now. <laughs> we were just saying that, that you'll all come back for us and we'll be an island full of vegetarians with... Uh, all the pigs will have little plaits in their hair. <laughs> Oh. That's why I don't eat meat, because I know I couldn't catch that pig and kill it. I think if you can catch a pig and kill it, fine, you're entitled to eat it, but I know I can't do that. It doesn't really bother me. I think killing an animal would be something I'd have the hardest problem with. But I guess once you've done it once, you can do it again. I'd find that hard. I would find that hard, no doubt. My father's a vet. He makes animals better. <laughs> Slaughterhouse. I definitely refuse to do that. <laughs> Is it after I've had sex with it? So I've skinned um, lambs, um, pigs have killed, uh, rabbits, that sort of stuff. If I'm hungry, I'll slaughter you. The volunteers have been set the task of building a pen somewhere in this field before rounding up a flock of sheep to herd into it. Our selection team is looking for practicality and ingenuity. Downhill is going to be the natural movement for the sheep. If I was a sheep, I'd go straight down there. While the sheep are released and immediately run to the top of the field, Dr Roger Stevenson is testing the pen they've built down in the bottom corner. <laughs> the early signs are encouraging as the sheep are masterfully herded towards the pen. It went wrong because it was like they they were too fast for us. Undaunted, they try again and soon have the sheep just where they want them. I 
I think we come back tomorrow and start again. They're not quite intimidated by Those us. sheep, no, we haven't got a clue. They know. They just know. <laughs> We're sending out vibes, King. We know nothing. Uh, uh, as you notice, when the sheep came out, they go straight to the top of the field, don't they? Yeah. Sheep run uphill, but it's better than run downhill. Oh, okay. oh, really? yeah. So that, that was the ah. uh, one mistake. Having no luck getting the sheep to the pen, they decide instead to take the pen to the sheep. Whether this tactic will work with over 700 sheep on the island is another matter. Volunteers are now required to lead a sheep back to the yard, but in the absence of offers, it's Ben who gets the call. If there was a legitimate reason that I should be given a certain role, and um, yeah, of course, that would be fine. It would annoy me a bit to sort of be pushed into doing something just because everyone thought, oh, he, he'd be willing to do it, um, and just because I wouldn't kick up a fuss. Do, am I, guys, am I doing this right? I cheated myself on a few occasions in my life when I haven't stuck things out. There's a few schools that I've been to that I never stayed at and various other things. And for me, to prove to myself that I can, I can you know, change my lifestyle so dramatically and to prove that I could stay for a whole year, would, would be, that would be the first thing that would come to my mind. <gasps> Does anyone else want to have a go, actually? Coping with their own livestock will certainly test the patience of the castaways, but so too will the local wildlife, and in particular, a certain summer visitor. Midgey, what mosquito? The black fly of Scotland. <laughs> the what? <laughs> Come again. A what? A midgey. No. The what? Midgey's the, the equivalent of mosquito. We're going to do a oh. mosquito test with her. Yeah, the dreaded Scottish midge. Yeah, they're shocking things. <laughs> Little buggers. <laughs> yeah. Are they that bad? <laughs> they bite you and they're very itchy. After a while, I think you become immune to them. It's just... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wishful thinking. <laughs> <laughs> Flies won't come near you if you drink ooze off. Forget the camera and my be pylons. I don't need half a tin to last a full year. I don't suppose we'll be allowed a bottle of ooze all once a month, will we? <laughs> Sorry. In the absence of any flush toilets on the island, the volunteers will have to come to terms with a compost sewage system that will enable them to store human waste and recycle it as valuable compost fertiliser. I'm never going to get a job as a hammer technician. <laughs> We've asked the volunteers to build and fill a compost bin to find out who has the stomach for one of the most unpleasant jobs on the island. They work together very well, actually. Yeah. I'll that's say Ben's fairly yeah. commanding, oh. apart from he's a poo phobe. He's scared that he's going to get contaminated by the poo that's in that, that container over there. He's going to jump out right. and get him somehow. Building the compost bin was the easy bit. Filling it is the real test. Ready? Yeah, right, yeah. cool. Let's shovel shit. Oh, no. Your poo, mate. Didn't you have to do this at boarding school? Oh, <laughs> my God. Where am I putting it? In the barrow. Right. Oh. It's not working. Right, no. <laughs> I think I'm going to gag. Oh, oh look at the worms. Notice the bits of sweet corn and pepper that are still in there. Yeah. Oh, no. Is that enough, yeah? Would you like to nominate the next person? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, Ron! <laughs> Is he actually being sick? Oh, Ron God. didn't even make it oh, to the shovel. God. I thought it was going to be all right. Um, but the, <laughs> the stink... The stench is uh, um, something just, else. <laughs> it turns your stomach over. And um, it doesn't smell like shit like when you've just had a shit, does it? It's like... Shh. 
It's like when my cats have done a shit behind the sofa <laughs> and I haven't discovered it until about three weeks five, later. Five it's got a really awful smell. It's and that's the sight what that's of it like. as well, the texture of it. It's like, it is like cat and there are worms and stuff. <laughs> And I, yeah, I took my goggles off to have a look because I, I was all steamed up, like, you know, couldn't see a thing. And I had a look, and that did make my stomach go up there. <laughs> it's unlikely that they're going to perform the same task, but it's very likely that they're going to have problems um, with either their drainage or their sewage system. It does happen in any sewage system. Um, people have to manage that system. So if there's a blockage or a problem, they are likely to have to deal with semi-raw or raw sewage. <laughs> oh, that was lovely. <laughs> I've lost, lost six ounces. <laughs> <laughs> no one look. Oh, my gosh. Excellent. Can we go and have a shower now? Yeah. Please. Well, just remember when you have a shower, you're contributing to that <laughs> shitty mess. It's almost halfway through the volunteers' assessment. Views about the final 15 are starting to form. The next test will be make or break for some of them. It's an orienteering race designed to show how they perform in a group and under pressure. Divided into three teams, they have to carry a volunteer to the first marker point. The team must be together before the next clue is opened. They've been told to use their initiative and do whatever they can to win the race. Now, who's good at reading maps? Me, yes. crap. They haven't been told that more important than winning is how they do it. The red team is a man short. Ron is not coming. He's decided that he doesn't want to take part today. Ron's decision not to take part is an interesting one. It shows that he may lack some sort of commitment to the project because he's clearly going to be selective about which tasks he's prepared to take part in and which things he really doesn't want to do. He has a lot to offer in many ways. He might be kind, he might be funny, but you have to question whether or not you want somebody in the island who's going to be picky. Well done. You've you arrived at your first back, designated destination and you should have completed this task in about six minutes. Come on, guys, we need to know which way. We should have turned by the swimming pool. Oh, that's wonderful. Oh, dear. You yeah. should have turned by the swimming pool. There it is, 11 and 12, behind you. There, we are here. Right. We've got to get down here, okay. round here to up there. The yellow teams had some sort of conflict between Des and Jack. Is this absolutely the right way? Right. And then we have to climb back up again. Is there a way up there? And the green team also had a problem between Kim and Tammy. Yeah, you look at it like that. We're at the telephone box and we've got to go all the way up there to point nine, which is here. Right. Kim actually asks for a look at the map and Tammy starts making a face. So it's clear that there's going to be a lot of friction going on there. At first in the yellow group, it looked as if Jack was going to try and take control, but it didn't really last for very long. You actually get Des, Stuart and Tina looking at the map and Jack sitting in the corner playing with his compass and, and looking a bit ignored and a bit woebegone. Right, there you go. We've got to go to there, Jack. We're down here in the chalet park still. Cross, watch your feet. Can you put shoes on? Start following the fence. You don't have Come to on, guys it. and girls. You don't have to follow it closely. The kids will have to go down. As the self-appointed leader of the green team, Kim decides to take a shortcut through the woods. And the person in front should be experienced at walking through woods. We've come to the edge of the woods here. Right, yeah. So we're looking for so number number nine, was it? We were we're looking. No, we after that. We're looking for ten. On no, the no, other but we, we, our destination our right now is nine. nine. So in we theory, all... when you look at what's going on with the red team, things are managed very differently. You're not sure this is MacArthur's stone. Well, this is the first. Stone. Ben has taken the lead in a very negotiating way. Outside, yeah. What we've done, we've done a dog's leg, haven't we? <laughs> and altogether, it's a much more cohesive what? group. Yeah. Yeah, but excuse me, you have to take into consideration we have children. Back in the woods, all is not well. There is a path there that heads roughly in the same direction. OK. This is bowing round to the left enough. Fine. That looks like take it's going Take it, right. I'll get there and meet you. Promise. I'll do the extra grade. But Kim told me he can't read a map. That's why I'm going to get them. Kim, you can't. Not saying I can, but at least I knew where we were when we started. 
they find they find the route and the path. They believe that. We go out, Charlie. We've got a petrol switch, haven't we? Oh, don't turn anything on. Oh, though. God, don't Tina, turn anything Tina, on. Tina, just chilling around. Let's sit on it. Let's just. It's, it's not in gear. Let's be don't quick. Don't touch us. The yellow team have stumbled across a possible shortcut. What were we told? Use our initiative. Any means we are transport. To yes, get to our agreed. Objective. We know, but it's yeah. not bloody life. It doesn't matter. Yeah. It's only a flat road. Yeah. Yeah. Look, but, but not everyone's happy about using it. If it's just me, if it's just me and Steve, we'll go in the tractor. But I don't give a stuff about all this. My kids, do you know what I mean? I'm not putting my kids in danger for no, nobody, nothing, anything, competition, bollocks, nothing. Kids, away, away, the woman's back. It's a fair thing for a mother to be concerned about her children. I don't think anybody would argue with that. But if you feel, as Catherine clearly feels, that you can only look after them yourself, then it's going to be a problem having the children on the island. The tractor issue really doesn't end there because it becomes something of a running sore in the yellow group. If we had persuaded the driver of the tractor, the farmer, to didn't. use the tractor, you if, didn't. Jack, you listen, about if, it. we didn't, but had we done, oh, we yeah. could still not have used it here. because Kath would not have her children yeah. on the yeah. tractor and we go to the slowest now? person, Jack. You can get two people who want to lead, want to dominate and can sometimes seem to be arrogant. These are two people, Des and Jack, who have these types of qualities and they're at loggerheads with each other because each wants to take the lead. Kim has finally found his way out of the woods, but appears to have left half his team behind. The Reds have also split up, but as part of a deliberate and illegal tactic to find the next clue. We decided to send someone who didn't mind getting horribly sweaty on the head. So I ran on the head, picked them up, brought them back. We've planted them in a tree so we can pretend that we've just found them here and we're going to open them and hope that we don't have to keep going the way I just ran um, all over again. But we've just got to wait for Ray and Come on. Come the others on. before we open them. So, so the other teams, when they get their grid reference, aren't going to find their instructions there? No. no. We're, we're out to win. We're out we're, to win and that's it, I'm We've afraid. been told to do whatever we want and if it means um, giving them a, uh, the yeah, wrong way or meaning they can't find something, then I think, that's, I think that's within our rules. I don't, I don't, I don't think survival. ethics come into it. It's survival of, <laughs> of the fittest, and we've been told to, to do whatever we can. Can we turn down on camera? Anyway, jump. Hey! Oh! Hey! Good effort. The Reds aren't the only team doing whatever they can to win. Oh, we're number three, and that's ours. We're three. Okay. So, so let's keep those with let's us. Let's keep those with us. Right. So the others can't find them. Check and will it. Yeah. Does, it, does everyone agree yes, with that? Yes, totally. Wow, totally, totally I, I, yes. Wow. Totally. Should we go through everyone? I Sheila? don't really. I, I don't yes. really. No, because it's not I fair. I don't. It is fair. Let's just move them a little bit. We're not fair. We're here. Just leave the envelope. Leave the envelope. One at a time. Can I just make a suggestion? Just hide it a little bit. Don't go mad. Absolutely. I feel as we're ahead anyway, we can afford to give them some. Yeah, but this is competition today. Well, it's not really in competition and can yeah, I just say just something? We're here. So we we'll hide it, it because they would do it to you. Yeah. Well, and that would and I think you're very right. naive it's to think that they wouldn't. This is a very important feature of life on the island. What's going to happen is some people are going to want to do thing, something one way and others are going to want to do it another way. And they have to have some means of negotiating within their group and some way of coming to a decision. Well, let's go, let's go. go. And what are you doing with their envelopes? We're going to hide them just near where they should be, but not yeah. quite. <laughs> Do it, man! Do it! Kim raises the cheating stakes by attempting to bribe the production team. Go and get the bloody van and pay, give him 20 quid for two... Well, tell him we need it for about an hour. What was that? It's not going to happen, guys. I'd love to help you out, Kim. You're on your own, mate. It's the type of thing that a person might do if he or she was feeling particularly threatened, the leadership wasn't going well, and there had been ground lost. Yeah, it's got to be that way. Because yeah, you, yeah. you can't get up there. While he was doing that, Tammy actually found a clue and was discussing this with a couple of other members of the team. And when Kim realised this, he took charge again. All right, let's go this way. They all willingly followed him, even although he was apparently going in the wrong direction. We're going in the opposite direction. Completely. Yeah, look. But he's going across up there. No, 
exactly. I mean, why are we striking up into the hill? Once a leader's been established and when somebody has the kind of dominant personality that Kim has, it's difficult for somebody to challenge, especially a young girl, to challenge an older man who has lots of skills. So when he went on ahead, they just followed. Why Could we just take a vote on what we think should be done? Right. I vote that... Liz Catherine is using all her management consultant skills to try and bring some order to the yellow team. We're losing, we've lost three minutes yeah. already. Right. We're resting though, Jack. We're not losing we'll keep time. On like this. Sandy's resting time. Covering. The vote in this case was about whether to cheat by sending a runner up up the hill really to collect the clue and bring it back instead of having all of the team going up the hill to get the clue together. So we just ball. voted to lose effectively. Des felt that this was something he disagreed with. However, the rest of the team took a vote on it and they decided that this was what they should do. I don't agree, but I'm prepared to run ahead right. to find well, the item. I think, we it, I think we may end up losing because, because we're sending a runner. It doesn't matter. I know it doesn't matter. No, it doesn't matter. But that was the, that was the instruction at the beginning, Liz. Do you want to do it on your own or do you want two people to run? Well, someone can Look. come with, but I'm going to run on as fast as I can. Okay, fine, if you're happy to do that. The debate we've had took four and a half yeah. minutes. No, no. Do you need a compass so that you can make sure you find your way back? No, thank you. Okay. Sure about that, Des? Are we I'll take a compass just for safety state. Jack, can I take your compass? Are we waiting for... Yeah. No, Jack, I think... Well, no, Jack. Come on, get going. I'll Jack. keep you inside and then I can keep these inside and okay. then we know where we're going. Children, we're going Jack. down. Get going. Going, Becky, Becky, we're going down. Des had been looking particularly tense as time had gone on and of all the two people to go off together, Jack and Des seemed to be the most unlikely combination. And as you would expect, there ended up being a major drama. Unfortunately for Des, it's caught on camera. I'm not sure whether he thought it was there. I'm not sure whether he thought he might actually be able to do this and not be, not be found to be doing this. He was clearly very annoyed and when you're very annoyed and very upset and under stress and in a competitive situation when something's very important to you, when you get mad like that, the things that tend to come out are probably the things you really think and haven't been able to say all the time you've been complying with the voting system and saying yes it's over here Jack and you know along those lines. Okay. Am I making sense? <laughs> yes, we've come a long way up to go a long way down. That's the game. Up to this point, we haven't seen much of the doctor, Roger Stevenson. Look, look, this is crazy going down something steep if we're going in the wrong direction. If we're, if we're really going over there, we've got to gl glide down gently. Second rate. I'm not impressed. It's, you know, the fog is coming in. We've got to get there in three minutes. You know, we're not going to make it. We're going this way? Yeah. Yeah. Take control. I can't. I'm in control here. Do you want to hold the hands? And the other thing is, if you're in control, you have to start in control and finish in control. You can't take over halfway because you're already lost. He's been in the periphery, I think, of most of the decision-making that's gone on. Now, he has nothing to prove here. He has particular skills that, that will be very valuable in the island. It doesn't mean to say he's the only doctor who, who applied for this, but um, I suspect that it's a bit of a challenge to take the leadership in a group like this in an orienteering setting. He may feel that he can't read a map or he's going to make a bottom of himself and he might not be very happy about that. He can therefore say, I'm in charge up here, I've got, I've got a child in my back, I'm looking after the children, and stand back. And he stands back with a certain level of confidence because he has these valuable skills, so he doesn't really have to push himself the way some of the others have to. Ben's still pushing himself and his red team as hard as ever. The clue's in the middle of the lake, but not anymore. Um, well, we ran down here. Um, we were told what we understood was that we weren't allowed to open any of the rules until all our team was here. But two of us got here first. I swam in, grabbed the boys. Where am I putting this? Unfortunately, the crew weren't here. And, um, but we grabbed them, but we haven't opened them yet, so... As far as we're concerned, we, we didn't break 
the rule that we were told. Ben seems to be turning into something of a, a superman here. He swam in the lake, he collected the clues, he also was the one who ran ahead and didn't mind getting all hot and sweaty. He's shown considerable leadership qualities combined with oh, kindness. And altogether he's proven to be quite a remarkable leader, I think. He's, he's turned up trumps here. And he's task-centred in that he wants the job done, he's very competitive, he wants to win, he's prepared to cheat. He's also prepared to modify the cheating to accommodate the other members of the group. He's also looking after the other members of the group. So he's quite person-centred. He's, he's looking around to make sure somebody isn't a bit tired, somebody doesn't need a bit of some water, somebody doesn't need you know, help to get up when they've fallen over. And really, you can't ask much more of a leader. I mean, that's the ideal leader who's got those, those two things combined together. I was going to say, where the hell are you guys going? Kim, you walk past mark point eight. Kim's leadership style is very different. Kim tends to lead from the front and he seems to have upset members of his group rather than shown sort of caring tendencies towards them. The other team is further away than us. We can still get there and get back here, I think, before the other team. But Dennis, we've... everyone walked down the hill and walked back up the hill. Well, exactly. It's because you felt that your way was right. Yeah, and Jack was going to be here. You've been, what, 50 metres down? Jack's there now, not here, for me to shout back to him. Liz, Liz it's right. Liz, we've broken the rules once, so if we've lost from breaking the rules, we can break we've them again. Touched can it. Can you go... You haven't touched it? I've not touched it. Oh, Jesus Christ. No, you can't touch it. It's just there. Jesus! I'm like, Tina, Tina, I'm running down a hill to touch something that gives the end of the game. When we can walk five minutes, we'll be halfway there but now. You have gone against the decision that the whole group I've come made. back to revise the decision. I asked you, were you happy to go ahead because you didn't agree with it? And you said yes. Never mind. What has annoyed the yellow group is that Des, who had agreed, albeit he didn't like the decision, he'd agreed to go up and collect the clue and bring it back to the group. Des came back without it. He came back without having even touched it, which means that Des took a decision all on his own and he went against the superb voting system that had been set up within this group. The key, Tina, is to win this game. We were going to give it away and now we can still potentially win. Tina, let's stick together. If Des goes to the island, they are going to have to be a wee bit careful about how committed he is to the decisions that groups make because there is the possibility that he might be sent to do a task and not perform it because he might decide it merits more discussion or he can think of a better way and he may come back and not have completed it. And on the island that could be a big problem because some of the things they're going to be dealing with will be very important and you really need to know that the decisions that the groups make are going to be carried out properly no matter whether the person sent to do the job is somebody who agrees or disagrees with the decision. Having reached their final marker, the red team will stop at nothing in their bid to win the race. Car theft is their latest tactic. Oh, pumps! <laughs> I thought we had it there, guys. The fact that they were prepared to steal a car is actually quite astounding. And the fact that so many people who were talking about ethics earlier on were prepared to get in a car and, and go off in it that didn't belong to them without permission is it's really quite entertaining. All the pressure and angst in the yellow team finally proves too much for Catherine Wignall. Get her a drink of water, get her a drink of water. Sandra Colbeck was the person who came to the rescue. She came and she gave her a big hug and allowed her to talk about you know, what was worrying her and how she was feeling. And Sandy Colbeck has a, a lot of qualities in that direction. She might not be the fittest person. She might be struggling a bit in terms of getting uphill and down dale, but she has some very, very good maternal type qualities, caring qualities, which would be extremely useful on the island. The yellow team decide to call it a day and head back to base, which is also where the green team are heading if they could only agree on the best way back. The, the way back to the sheepfold is downhill, it's quick, and from the sheepfold yeah. all the way is good track. That's yeah. what and said that and we well. know which that's direction what... we're going, we don't have to stop and talk. And that's what we said before we Decision, are we doing it here. or not doing it? Yeah. yeah. Right, yeah. let's do it. Mommy, I want to go back. Okay. <laughs> How do you feel? Well, it's good stuff with certain people who just think that they, uh, you know, know what to do all the time and make decisions without consulting everyone, march off ahead and, you know, when we haven't actually had a group discussion about it. But, you know, whatever. Onward. 
I am a pain in the ass person and I am a skipper and I do take control sometimes and I shouldn't a lot of the time and it's part of my nature and uh, if the group as a whole feel that my attributes my good side is worth my pain in the ass big mouth pushy side then take me in and if they feel that living with me is just going to be a friggin nightmare and they'd rather make their own mistakes without me around in my big mouth then say so and I'm quite willing to step back out of this I'm not an hypocrite. I'm not well, an hypocrite. I, just think, I, think perhaps, I don't agree with what you're we, saying. We, it's all very well said. Oh, yeah, it's, it's political. I'm in, not in that nonsense. No, 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 all I'm talking Listen, about Listen, kid, I told you last night, if you were stuck down there, I'll dive in for again. you. I think that Jack's frustration was related partly to the time factors and partly to you know, Liz wanting to organise everything through a voting system and Jack feeling that they should just get on with the job. What is interesting is his row was with Liz, but the whole group kind of walked off away from him and left him in splendid isolation. I've been sent to Coventry, kids. Bye. There was so much time spent waffling. Something around nothing in 19 minutes, and we were then we'd found it. We're losing, we've lost three minutes yeah. already. I believe in let's get on with the job, but obviously, I'm not being I, I don't consider myself to be the most diplomatic in endeavoring to get the job done, but uh, that's me, that's my personality. Do you feel that, that people are listening to your point of view, though? Do you think you're contributing to the discussion? No, they hear my point of view. They don't listen. There is a difference. In a final act of ingenuity and cheek, the red team have persuaded the owner of the vehicle to lift them back to base to claim a resounding, if slightly immoral, victory. The red team, I think, was really outstanding in many of the ways in which it operated. Ben, you know, was transformed as a, a leader who was, you know, determined to get there and do things very well. And, you know, it was a very happy group. There were a lot of problems with the yellow group who were fighting within themselves and had gone from decision making, which was really, you know, very good decision making in itself, but not suitable for this type of project and caused a great deal of harassment and distress. Their group was much less happy when it, when it returned. And the Green group, I think, had, had learned a great deal about following the leader and maybe following the leader who, who didn't really know where they were supposed to be going. And maybe in another situation, some of the members in the Green group might consider, you know, taking over and, and, say, and challenging a leader because they've learned from this experience. No, you me the volunteers you are yes. now halfway through the tests. Tomorrow night we'll see how some prove their worth while others rule themselves out as they face their first real survival test. Do you want the help or do you not want the help? Just come over. Do you want to help or do you not want to help? I'm surprised I'm still here really. I was going to leave yesterday. The slaughter discussion becomes a reality and threatens to rule Ben out of the selection. <laughs> Do I? Oh, God. Hello. And the first 15 castaways who will spend a year on the island are selected. You know that we can't take everybody, don't you? Well, I can see that it's a pretty yucky thing for you to have to do. But tell me! <laughs>